Your commentator is Joe O'Brien. June 3rd, 1935. The Normandy $60 million luxury liner comes to America on its maiden crossing of the Atlantic, an event that occasioned a marine demonstration that will live in history. Whistles blew and sirens shrieked a mighty welcome to the new queen of the seas. The famed skyline of America's greatest city formed a fitting background for America's greeting to one of the most stately ships that ever crossed the Atlantic. Six years later, shortly after the United States entered the war, the Normandy was seized and placed under naval guard. Hundreds of civilian workers were put aboard the Normandy, renamed the USS Lafayette, to strip the vessel of its costly furnishings and to prepare it for war duty as a United States transport. February 9, 1942, the Normandy afire, a fatal tragedy to the big luxury liner and to America. As the flames rapidly spread to devastating fury, workers madly scrambled to safety, while fireboats and fire engines poured tons of water into the stricken vessel. All fire doors, vertical and horizontal, were closed to protect the ship's vitals from the flames, but this was all in vain. Dense clouds of thick, acrid smoke billowed far out over Manhattan, casting a mucky pall over Midtown and downtown New York. While the blaze was at its height, hundreds of doctors, nurses, and first aid workers were rushed to the scene to remove the wounded and to administer first aid to scores overcome in their efforts to stem the fury of the spreading flames. Millions stood in awe when the Normandy first reached America on its triumphant maiden voyage. Again, millions lined the New York and New Jersey shores to sadly observe the passing of the doomed and ill-fated ship. Rear Admiral Adolphus Andrews, Commandant of the 3rd Naval District, ordered all hands ashore to save the lives of those who were heroically battling to keep the huge liner upright. Hour after hour, tons of water were pumped into the Normandy, causing a bad list to port, as strong hawsers snapped and tugs strove to push the giant vessel close to the wharf. Then, during the night, the Normandy met its final doom, when, with a resounding crunch of ice and a belch of smoke, the 83,000-ton vessel dipped her flame-scarred superstructure into the surface of the Hudson River. Hundreds were injured when America lost its biggest naval auxiliary. Millions of dollars of damage has been done, and thousands of man-hours of labor have been nullified. Accident or sabotage, the world may never know. But the fate of the luxury liner Normandy, rechristened the USS Lafayette, is one of the major catastrophes of our day.